In Dubrovnik, we're bringing together 40 researchers from five different continents, representing over 30 disciplines in the arts, humanities and social sciences to tease out some of the underlying issues that help us better understand what uh, we mean by the crisis uh, of democracy and how it relates to cultural trauma. There is a moment when we feel that democracy is under threat just about everywhere in the world. The question that we need to ask ourselves is how to interrupt that progression how to interrupt the cycles of violence that keep repeating themselves without any possibility or any ability to envision a possibility of a different future. I think if this one way that we might think about that is through the arts, because the arts can lift us out of our own horizons of possibility and enable us to envision something else. We have many genres, we have science fiction, we have ways of, in, of imagining ourselves as somebody else, imagining our own cultures as structured in a different way. And it's through the arts, I think, that we can um, allow ourselves to dream, that we can allow ourselves to hope, and that we can allow ourselves to create change. The Global Humanities Institute had a varied format. We began with a fantastic introductory lecture by Mirla Mukherjee uh, on the evolution of democracy in the modern world. We had a series of wonderfully rich and provocative uh, uh, panel discussions where we defined terms. What does crisis mean? What do we mean by trauma? What does democracy mean? We looked at the role of leader cults and trauma narratives. We discussed religious polarization, terrorism and genocide, strategies of popular resistance to political violence. Institute has been a, a great learning curve for me. Uh, I had the opportunity to present my paper on uh, the Anglophone crisis in Cameroon, which I also linked it to the crisis of the democracy. But most importantly, I got to realize through this institute that uh, the crisis of democracy is not peculiar to Africa alone. And, uh, a series of absolutely cracking uh, presentations by our early career uh, researchers. Everybody who attended those uh, presentations learned something. In fact, the whole nine days has been extraordinarily uh, uh, rich. And, uh, I think what we're learning here at the Institute is how central the issues uh, of crisis of democracy are and you know are linked with the main foci and the engagements of uh, humanities and social sciences i think this has been a I work on the propaganda of the far right in India in the 1940s and 50s. So this is the first time I'm going abroad, thank you so much for that. And uh, what it's basically taught me is one, a lot of comparative examples from various countries. I've learned a lot from all the professors, I've learned a lot from all the students. So my specific area of expertise is something called digital humanities, which means I'm very interested in the way that arts and humanities knowledge and new technologies interact. And from the point of view of the technologies, we can see really clearly the role that the information and communication technologies are playing in disrupting the de democracies and disrupting democratic processes. I and mean, even you know, identity formation and cultural interaction, all of this is really changing because of a lot of this corporate technology. So what I can see, again, with my two hats on, is that the arts and humanities have awful lot to bring to our awareness of what this technology is doing and how we might actually resist it. I think there's a very positive message there in that things that we learned about very early in our educations about how to see the world through the eyes of another language, uh, through another culture, through another person that you learn through literature, through an ethical lens, 
all of this really needs to be brought into the way we work with technology and I think that that will contribute to the way we can start to deal with and understand the crisis of democracy that feel like they're all around us. Oh, I think that GHI is doing a wonderful job at bringing together um, so many different perspectives from different nationalities and to me I think it has helped me make connections with other realities not just in broader terms but also in a theoretical way so um, I believe that the summer school has definitely helped me um, think about different theoretical frameworks that I can use to engage with the materials and the research that I'm conducting. Any of us, the trip to uh, uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina was the highlight. It was a very intense two days. We had lots of interesting issues at the border, but nothing can take away the memories that we have now of Mostar, Sarajevo, and of course, Srebrenica. We visited the uh, very dignified uh, cemetery where the victims of the Srebrenica uh, uh, genocide are buried. Many of us are still trying to process what we saw and heard and how best to come to terms with the inhumanity of what occurred under the noses uh, and with the complicity of the United Nations. Well, I mean, I've been thinking so much all through this last six days about um, the richness of the interdiscipline, the interdisciplinary perspectives that we're getting here, and it takes me out of my own zone of comfort. Um, but it, just to say one thing very, very concrete, which is that after the visit to Srebrenica, it was so overwhelming that I had to ask myself, what is it about being here that makes this knowledge so much more um, impactful and I, had, I mean I'm, a, I'm an archival historian I do research and I teach based on what I read what I learn what I learn in archives and uh, now it just makes me think in a different way about the importance of site situated knowledge and site situated learning there was something about being there and looking at the distance from um, a Srebrenica to the battery factory and other kinds of things just you could so much more imagine the human experience, but I have to think it through. What is it about that? And I think, you know, one very concrete takeaway is that I've never really been bothered to try to set up all the arrangements to take students to places to learn about things historically. And now I see that I'm gonna to have to figure out how to do that and go to the trouble of doing it because I think there's just a different impact and takeaway and probably just a different process of knowing and understanding that happens in a place with people who have direct familial or cultural knowledge of the historical event.